In this video, we're going to learn how to attach the drive wheels to the jack board from the MK1 DRV drive motor kit. You can get more resources for this video by visiting jb.works and enter the TMT code shown below at the search prompt on the website. In this video, we're going to take a normal jack board and turn it into a driving jack board. So basically we have two drive motors, left and a right, and one front trolley wheel. And these connect into port E on the jackboard. So let's find out what we need. For this video you're going to need a freshly charged jackboard, one front trolley wheel, two drive motors, six M4 bolts, six M4 nuts, six M4 washers, one spanner for the nuts, and one Allen key. All of the items on this side, except the jack board, are included in the DRV1 motor drive kit. Right, now the fun part, putting it together. Okay, so first of all, let's put the drive wheels to the side, and we'll just move this lot out of the way. We'll use, uh, we'll basically put the front trolley wheel on first. So what you do is you flip the jack board over with port B at the top, so facing that way, and then we're going to take two M4 bolts and put them in these two holes here. And then use your finger to hold them in so they don't fall out, okay? And we know it's correct because you've got one empty hole there, a bolt, empty hole, bolt, and another empty hole. So while holding the bolts in, take the trolley wheel and just insert it in the holes like this. So you can see where the two bolts are poking out and where the washers will go. And these guys here, the ones with the circles, these are washers. So we need two of those, one on each bolt. Let's put them on like that. And then lastly, you take a nut and assemble it. Just basically screw it onto the bolt. Like this. So I'm just hand tightening them now. So you can see we've got the trolley wheel attached via two nuts and bolts and washers. If you leave it like this, eventually they will come loose and fall off, which is not good. So use the spanner to just tighten them hand tight. Most of the time you don't need the Allen key, but if you do, you just insert it through the hole that's above the bolt like that, and then just use it to hold the bolt in place as you're tightening it. But most of the time you shouldn't need to do that. So just tighten up the other one. So this is our front trolley wheel mounted. And see how it's mounted near port B? Okay. Now that we've got the front trolley wheel mounted, we're going to start by, we're going to carry on, by mounting the left drive wheel. So that is a wheel that's going to go on this side here. Now if you look at these two, they're going to bolt on like this. So this is the left one. And that's because the wheel is on the left of it. And the metal works on the right with the motor poking back like this. Okay. So the first thing we do is we're going to put it on the left side. So we need to flip it over and insert two bolts right here towards the back. So the trolley wheel's at the front. This is towards the back. And again, same as before, just hold them in with your finger. Then you take the left motor and insert it so that the two holes that are furthest away from the wire are on the two bolts. You can tell the left and the right because if I tried to put the right here, it would go like that, which is wrong. So the right one will go over here. So same as before, we take two washers and put them onto the nuts, uh, sorry, the bolts like that, and then we attach the nuts, this gets a lot easier once you've done it a few times, believe me, there we go. So now we've got the two nuts and bolts and washers holding on this motor, let's see he's a bit floppy. So what you want to do is line him up so he's perfectly straight and then just tighten so I think that looks pretty good. 
And just double check before you tighten both of them. So he needs to move just a little bit like that. I think that's pretty straight. So now we can go ahead and tighten them properly. And again, they need to be reasonably tight because otherwise the motor's just gonna come off and that's embarrassing. So now we have our left motor attached. So if we flip it back over, we have the trolley wheel in the front and our left motor attached on the left hand side. And next we will attach the right hand drive motor. Now that we've got the left motor on, we're going to attach the right hand motor. So the same thing applies. We're going to put onto the right hand side. So we flip the jack board over and put two bolts through. Now these two bolts need to be placed such that they are away from the front trolley wheel and at the far left of the set of holes on the side. Much like the motor we've got down here, which is the left hand motor. We take the right hand motor and place it onto the bolts. See here? So we now have our two bolts. And lastly, we put on the two washers. And of course the washers help to prevent the nuts from coming undone while we're driving, which we don't want them to do. And I'm just gonna put the nuts on. And again, just lay it flat and just check to make sure that this is facing straight. So that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna move to this. That's still all right, yep. So we just, again, tighten them nice and tight. Don't need to be really, really tight, but tight enough that they don't fall off. So now if we flip it back over, we have attached the left drive motor, the right drive motor, and the front trolley wheel. So you notice that each of the motors has some wires coming off them, and these are used to supply power and control from the jack board to the motors. So next, we're going to attach the drive motors in terms of their cabling. If you look at the motors, you'll see that each motor has a power cable attached to it. So what we're going to do next is connect these to the jack board. We'll start with the left motor. Now if you notice on each of the power cores, there's a red wire and a black wire. And then if you notice on the jack board at port E, which is where the motors connect, you have a red tag and a black tag, and they correspond with the red and the black wires on the motor. So I'm going to connect the left motor by attaching it to the left motor set of pins on the jack board at port E, and they are right here, and they've got LM, which means left motor. So that's connected our left motor. And then we do the same for the right motor. Now if you notice again, you've got the red wire and the black wire. And on the jack board, we've got RM, which means right motor, and the red wire goes on this side and the black wire goes on this side. So basically we take this plug and plug it in. Now a good way to check your connections is if you turn the jack board around so that the two motor connections are facing you, you should see two red wires right here. If you see a red wire and a black wire, or two black wires, or a black and a red, then you've got them the wrong way around. You should see both red. The other thing is that the wire on the left should be going to the right motor, and the wire on the right should be going to the left motor. So there we have the completed robot. The wires are all attached, the wheels are attached, the drive wheels attached. Now all we need to do is drive it. Have a look at these pictures. The left picture shows the view while looking at the right hand side of the jack board. And you can see the wire for the right hand motor is actually on the left hand side of the picture. And the wire for the left hand motor is on the right hand side of the picture. And if you look towards the bottom, you can see the letters RM and LM. RM meaning right motor, LM meaning left motor. And the photograph on the right shows the view looking down on the jackboard with port D below.
and the back of the jack board is facing towards the right. And again, notice how both of the red wires correspond with the red bars on port E. You can use these pictures to check the attachment of the wheels and the trolley wheel. The picture on the top left shows the attachment of the left drive wheel. The picture on the top right shows the attachment of the right drive wheel. And the picture at the bottom shows the attachment of the front trolley wheel. Now that we've finished building it, it should look something like this. So we've got the left wheel, right wheel, front trolley wheel. Now what's left is to start driving it. Next, turn on the jack board and navigate to the dashboard. When there, click on the drive page. Now the drive page has a few features. The first one is this big joystick in the top. So if I drag it forward, the jack board will move forward. If I go backwards, it will go backwards. And if I go left, it will go left. And if I go right, it will go right. Don't worry about this uh, pop-up that keeps on coming up in Firefox saying that someone's trying to control your pointer. And it's you trying to control the pointer, so there's no problem. This slider down here controls the sensitivity of the speed. So all the way to the left, when you use the joystick and you go full forward, it will move forward at full speed. If you take it all the way to the right and then you drag the joystick, it will go forward slowly. And then halfway, of course, is about halfway. The other way you can drive the jackboard from the drive page is using your keyboard, and we'll look at that next. Another way you can drive the jackboard from the drive page is using the arrow keys on your keyboard, and those are shown in green in this picture. And as you'd expect, the up arrow makes you go forward, the down arrow makes you go back, the left arrow makes you go left, and the right arrow makes you go right. The sensitivity slider also affects the action of these keys. If you're into gaming, you can also use the WASD keys to drive the jackboard as well. And they work in the way that they normally work when you're playing a game. Lastly, we have a set of nine buttons laid out on the drive page. These allow you to program each button with a specific command or action that you can then use for controlling things like claws or servos, making the robot do certain moves, all sorts of things. And we'll cover those in a different video. In the next video, we'll learn how to control the drive motors from the command line and use the buttons on the drive page.